I'm Cynthia Cortman Westfall, a Broadway music director, conductor, voice coach, and tenured professor in the musical theater department at the University of Michigan. And I'm Chelsea Wilson, a performer turned voice teacher to Broadway stars and vocal coach on Broadway productions like The Phantom of the Opera, School of Rock, and more. Here on the Broadway Vocal Coach Podcast, you can expect real talk about the business, practical advice, and constant encouragement. We believe there's space for every artist in this industry. All you need is the right support. So consider us your two-woman hype team. Welcome to the Broadway Vocal Coach Podcast, where we help musical theater performers get unstuck and take the next step in their careers. Welcome back to the season finale of the Broadway Vocal Coach Podcast. Da, 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 da. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> With that, though, truly, everyone, welcome back. We are recording our season finale. This will be our 30th episode of the Broadway Vocal Coach Podcast. And can we just have a moment where we pat ourselves on the back that we have made it this far <laughs> and we have recorded this many episodes? <laughs> I'm looking back on all our topics thinking, when did we do all this? <laughs> we launched our first episode back in November, November 10th of 2022. Wow. And we're six months, we're, we're like exactly six months later from the time that we're recording wow. this episode. This has been a six month project. And first, let me just say thank you, Cynthia, for coming along this ride because I said, I want to make a podcast. And you said, really? And I said, yep, show up at this time. And you did. You have showed up every time and you haven't abandoned me on this project. (laughs) And I think we've had a great time. I think we've had a great time. We have. The other thing that is remarkable, and again, patting ourselves on the back here is I read some statistic and I'll need to verify what this exactly is, but something like 80% of podcasts don't make it past 10 episodes. Like people have grand really? grand schemes. Yes. People have like these big hopes. Oh, I'm going to launch a podcast. It's There's a million trillion podcasts on any given podcast app, but a huge percentage never make it past 10 episodes. Wow. So I'm really thrilled that we have managed to see this through to 30 episodes, that we have made this a six-month project. We are closing out a season. We're going to take a little break for the summer and come back in the fall. And I'm just grateful. I've had – I want to talk about that today, what we've learned, what some of our favorite moments have been. And I think we've learned so much in this process, mm-hmm. mostly mm-hmm. that – It is a real art to showing up and talking on a microphone to seemingly no one but (laughs) but ourselves. (laughs) And actually, are we any better at it than when we started? The answer is I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure. (laughs) I'm not sure we are. But you know what we're really good at doing? We are really good at showing up and just jumping in. And that has been the story of our company, of our partnership. We show up and we just launch it. Yeah. And then we learn along the way. We build the plane as we are flying. (laughs) That is the theme. That is the theme of everything that we've done with Broadway Vocal Coach for the last year and a half. And honestly, I think there's a lesson in that because I've talked to so many other folks who are in creative industries or run their own vocal studio, run their own business, or even actors, you know, the clients that we work with inside our studio membership. And there's so much apprehension to getting started with a project. Getting started is the hardest part, Mm -hmm. right? Or there's so much apprehension to say, okay, I'm ready now, or I know enough now, or I'm prepared enough now, now I can begin. And this holds so many people back from ever starting. And just with this podcast being an example of that, we've now recorded this podcast on multiple different microphones, multiple different web-based apps. We started with me editing this podcast, which heaven knows, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Thankfully, (laughs) we were smart enough to bring on an editor partway through this season, early on in the season. Hi, Meg. Thanks for making us sound so much better. Ooh, Meg, what would we do Meg. without you? Meg, keep we that would... in the editing. We want to make sure you get yeah. the shout out for your amazing <laughs> <Yeah>. editing. <laughs> for real. Without Meg, y'all would see what a disaster we truly are on these recordings without them. So 
that's the thing is like, <laughs> like you said, I think if you don't get started, you you don't know what you don't know yet. And I think if you're an actor listening to this or a creative person listening to this, you're going to learn so much from just putting your first self-tape on video. You're going to learn so much yep. from just showing up to your first voice lesson and taking that first step towards improving your voice or feeling more confident as a singer. You're going to learn so much when you show up to your first live audition in your hometown or in New York City, and you will never be, quote, prepared enough to take that leap. You have to go and you will learn from the experience. That is so true in my life, and I think that is true in absolutely everything that we have built together, Cynthia. You just got to get started. I think we've done a really good job of modeling what we say to our clients and our students all the time. Another part of that, which is finished is better than perfect. (laughs) Mm, Amen. And just getting something out there, just launch it, just do it is better than trying to make sure it's perfect. It'll never be perfect. And that goes from whether you're trying to launch a website, whether you're yeah ready to go on your first audition, is the song in good enough shape to do your first audition? Is your pre-screen good enough? Should I do take number 20 of my pre-screen video? No, call it a day after number three <laughs> and send it in. That's a great first lesson. Yeah. Good job us for not being perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, we, we do are that so really far well. From it. We do not perfect yeah. really well. <laughs> yeah, we sure do. We're an excellent example of that. An excellent example. And you just learn. You just learn as you go. I think that's my a huge takeaway from me from this podcast. The other thing that, and this is kind of along those lines, something else I've learned from this process is it's okay to pivot. And this is like the theme of my life. When I write my memoir, it'll be like, Chelsea Mm -hmm. Wilson, it's okay to pivot. (laughs) It's like the (laughs) hill I will die on. But I feel that way in this too. And I want to liken it for actors and and, and creative folks as well is like partway through, we got, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 episodes in and we're like, what else are we going to talk about? we got to switch gears here. And we started to bring in guests and we, we've had guests Mm -hmm. in every other episode for the past probably 10 episodes. And it has been such a joy to let this project, the podcast project develop in that direction and bring in other people, hear from other people, have other voices on this show, have their perspectives, learn from them. And just know This is all back to getting started. You get started and you're going to adjust as you go. And I feel that way if you're an actor. I feel that way if you're a performer. Start going into the room. See what you're getting called back for. Make adjustments as necessary. Slap something up on your actor website, you know, your resume, your headshot, and a bio. And then adjust as necessary. Pivot as necessary. Get something going and don't be afraid to make a change if and when needed. I think that's Mm -hmm. crucial for anyone who's a creative person. Creating anything. Yeah. Yeah. I have nothing to add to that. (laughs) The end. Okay. (laughs) The end. (laughs) With that, Cynthia, I want to hear from you. Looking back over our past 29 episodes, this being episode number 30, what are some of your favorite moments or episodes or themes that have arisen from previous conversations? Oh goodness. I'm I'm scrolling through all of our topics. Wow, we really we really had a lot, didn't we? Okay. Well, you know I love my creative atomic habits. You know I love my atomic habits. That will always be I'm gonna go back and listen to our <laughs> podcast on atomic habits. That's how much I love talking about that. I mean, all of our guests, I have to say, I really, really loved. I feel like every person we talked to said something that made me think differently or illuminated something for me. Which is one of the things I like about this business so much is that there's always more to learn. There's always more ways to think about the business. I loved hearing Desi Oakley when she talked about that moment in London when she went on stage for the first time in Waitress with zero notice (laughs) and a bagel. (laughs) That was amazing. I loved hearing about Emily's journey to Wicked. That was such an unusual and up and down journey to get to where she is. Gavin, I I always love talking to Gavin. I just think he's such a fount of positivity and compassion and just everything he does is infused with love in some way. And I just love that. Delphi's story about booking her first Broadway show off a pre-screen 
and how she had built a body of work by showing up over and over to audition rooms that it was to a point where they didn't even need to see her live because she had done all of that work that she might not even have realized was building such a body of work, but she had. And then the pre-screen was enough to book a Broadway show. I love that. Mm -hmm. I mean, now I'm just going down the list. Brie Jackson. I mean, Brie Jackson. I remember her when she was what, 15 and a half auditioning for the musical theater program where I taught. <laughs> and her life has just been this incredible journey. Something that I feel like has come up with almost all of our guests is this concept of networking. And everyone refers to it a little bit differently and talks about it differently, but it has come up in nearly every single conversation that we've had with artists Everybody. who have come onto the podcast. Mm -hmm unprompted. Mm -hmm. It's not like we're pushing this agenda. Mm -hmm. They are coming in and every person has said, I reached out to this person and they connected me with this person, or I had just developed a great relationship over the course of my whole auditioning career. And therefore they, they knew I was right for X, Y, or Z. Something that I loved in episode 28 with Samantha Massell and Madeline Myers, Sam told this story of being recommended, send one email on behalf of your career every day. I loved mm -hmm. that advice because I think it might push people out of their comfort zone to be like, I have to e send one email every day. Think about who you can reach out to and just be in touch with. So much is about creating relationships and creating a network for yourself in a way that feels supportive and positive. That's really what we're all about. And I think that's so much of why we decided to found Broadway Vocal Coach to begin with is we really wanted to help folks who are, you know, entering the business or at a transition point in their professional career, a safe place to show up and sing and get mentorship and get advice. And that's what we do inside the BBC studio. But we really want to foster that kind of a network for artists. We all need that. We cannot pretend for one moment that we can do this on our talent alone, or just on our own in general. Everyone needs a little bit of help and having that network and reaching out to people is crucial. And I love that every one of our guests has brought that up. Yep, I agree. I agree. And us included, you and me included. Everything mm -hmm. in our own careers has come from networking, from getting to know folks, from small jobs that we've done, that we've built relationships that then led to bigger jobs down the line. We had a while back in March, the beginning of March, we had an episode called The Benefits of Outside Hobbies, and we talked about being a whole person and doing things outside of theater. <laughs> and it was a good reminder to me to be like, oh, <laughs> yes, I should do other things that aren't work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I feel like that's a thing that's come up too, especially with our guests, <clears throat> is like, what are the other things that make you a whole person? And something I loved in episode 20 with Emily, with Emily Kristen Morris, is how during the pandemic, she really leaned into teaching and being a coach and being a voice teacher and establishing that huge platform for herself and how that has influenced and maybe even opened some doors as a performer. And you just never know what these other things that you're interested in or good at, how they're going to affect your life, whether it's personally or professionally. And I always think it's just a good reminder to think about like, who are you as a whole person, especially for young artists? You know, like performing, mm -hmm. being an actor is not your entire identity. That's the other subtitle of my book, of my memoir. Yeah, is like <laughs> you are not your yes. job description. You know, like you are inherently valuable yes. and, and have worth outside of what show you're doing right now. Yeah, yeah. In addition to all of that is is that this business can be hard and it you can feel kind of knocked down at times and having something else that is sort of there for you even when this business gets really hard is really nice. And and like I said, I think I said this in that episode, having something that's low stakes, <laughs> having a low stakes hobby that is going to be there for you. It's like having a pet that it's going to be there for you with compassion and joy no matter what. And it doesn't need to mean any more than just that. I think that's really, yeah. really important. Cynthia, can I share with you what some of our most popular episodes have been? I'm so curious. Yes. What do you think of our – let's let's keep this to non-interview episodes. What do you think are our most popular episodes or topics? And then I will confirm whether you're right or wrong. Oh, my gosh. Is there a clear winner? There are some clear winners. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. 
Okay. Do you want to take a guess at what our most popular episode has been thus far outside of one of our guest interviews? Outside of the guests. Okay. Okay. I'm going to say what you actually need in your audition book. Mm, That is high up there. It really is. That was our, let's see, one, two, three, fourth episode back from November 21st. And that is a highly, highly listened to episode. And I got to say, that was back before we knew what we were doing with our recording equipment. So like we sound a whole lot better than we did then. But I think it's one of our most valuable episodes that we've ever done. I'm like, you know what? It can sound a little janky. The content is quality. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do one okay, more. Okay, guess, guess again. One more guess. One guess more guess. Again. The belt one. The belt. Can you ding, belt ding, healthy? Ding 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 ding. Is That's that it? it? How to belt healthy? Yeah. Or can you belt? What was it called? Healthy belting. Is there such a thing? Healthy belting. There it is. That was episode twenty three. Mm-hmm. Episode twenty three, and that was hugely popular. And you know what? I'm not that surprised. People love that word belting, and everyone wants to know how to do it better and Mm -hmm. how to do it in a way that's sustainable. And something that I hope that we shared enough in that episode is like, belting is not the only way to be a good singer in musical theater. Mm -hmm. It isn't the end-all be-all that sometimes we or the industry maybe places an importance or like like a shiny factor on. What do you think about that? Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think it's, I mean, there's plenty of singers we know who don't do a lot of belting, but they're powerful singers and captivating performers. They aren't necessarily the big belters. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That being said, I do think even for those folks who are sure that they are not belters, I do think it's like riding a bike or swimming. Anyone can learn. Will you necessarily become Michael Phelps at swimming? Maybe not. But can you learn how to swim really, really well? Absolutely. I don't even know. Is there a Michael Phelps of belting? <laughs> oh, gosh. Ethel. Ethel. <laughs> Pre-microphone belting. <laughs> yeah, she knew what she was doing. She knew what was up. She truly had to belt. The episodes that we've done about belting, we did a, a great episode about vocal health myth busting at the top of the year. It's episode 10. That's been hugely popular as well. And I think it's because there's so much conflicting information out there about – how to sing well or how to take care of your voice or what you really need to do. And so much advice is given as blanket statements like, oh, well, this is what everyone needs to do. Everyone needs Mm -hmm. to not eat dairy if they're a singer. Everyone needs to warm up for 30 minutes every day, no matter what. And what I think is refreshing in that episode is us sharing that like, you know, there's some things that are true. There's some things that are myths about taking care of your voice and your vocal health. And then there's just a lot of things that that are just not true for everyone and that you yep. have to learn and discover with yourself and your voice teacher and your life's journey to figure out like what works best for you. There's truly no one way to prescribe for all people and that that gets tricky if anyone yeah. is trying to give out blanket statement advice. So I like that episode for that reason. Yep, I agree. We've also had some – fantastic episodes about navigating the college audition process. We've had our past BVC Aspire coach, Katie Johanningman, come and join us. We've had our current BVC Aspire head coach, Julie Cavanaugh, join us. And our BVC intern this year, Emily Baggerly, talk all about her experience in the college audition process four years ago when she was going through the audition process. And I've heard from so many families and folks that those episodes have been incredibly helpful at illuminating what the process is actually like. I thought those episodes were so great. And again, just to hear from Katie and Julie and Emily, they all had a slightly different perspective. If if any of you ever come to our webinars, we often call them Q&Os. So instead of Q&As, it's Q&Os, questions and opinions instead of questions and answers. Because so much of this business and of the college process, there are so many different ways to approach things. And there isn't a one size fits all that works for every single student and every single family. And so I thought all three of them brought such great perspective and thoughts to what can be a really complicated and difficult and emotional process. I just thought they were all really, really, really 
smart and what they brought to those podcasts. Yeah, there's that theme again of there's really no one size fits all approach. Whether you are a high school student or the parent of a high school student looking to going into the college audition process, or if you're a pre-professional or a professional and you're you're working and you have a professional career, there's no one size fits all approach. And I think that's been a theme that we've tried to be really conscious of here on this podcast. But of course, in our own teaching, like this is this is what we do. We coach individuals. We we don't coach the masses to tell everyone to do the same thing. I just know that's a big priority for us. And when we get to Mm -hmm. work with our clients, whether they are college prep students, which we're just about to start, or whether there are ongoing professional clients inside BBC Studio, getting that one-on-one mentorship and being able to really address each person as the individual that they are, that's a huge part of our our core values and our philosophy here at Broadway Vocal Coach. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cynthia, what are your hopes and dreams for the Broadway Vocal Coach podcast when we come back in season two? (laughs) This dream that I have forced you upon. (laughs) My dream is that we figure out how to have a quick conversation without stepping on each other. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's what Meg edits out. That's a tough one, friends. It is hard to have a like quick banter back and forth and not step on each other's phrases. Gosh, I what I love about the podcast is, again, not that we're trying to give answers, but that we're in the thick of the discussion and that we're just talking about the hot topics of the day. And there will always be hot topics in this business. And there will always be confusions. And there will always be things that feel sticky and tricky. And I love that we can continue to sort of shine a light on some of that and either take some of the mystery out or to give some ideas on how to get through difficult things in the business, how to navigate tricky things in the business whether that's in the professional business or as you head into the college process, it's it can just be an overwhelming kind of a journey. And so I just really love that we're talking about a lot of the tricky topics. And I hope we continue to do more because you know there's a lot more topics that can be covered. And we will be back for them. What are you hoping for this podcast that you forced on me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm pleased. I'm really pleased with where we've ended up. I'm really proud that we've made it to 30 episodes. I'm thrilled folks have tuned in. I'm thrilled when people share share the podcast with other people. Here's your little plug to please share this podcast with other people. And even better, will you please rate and review our podcast wherever you're listening? That helps us so much. So that warms my heart. I really love hearing from people who are close to me and from people who I don't know very well that like something we said or some a guest we had on said something impactful. And I I just really love being able to have that that reach. My hopes for the next season, gosh, I can't wait to see what cool guests we have on. And I'd love to see more guests in like different fields, like Mm -hmm. music directors we could talk to and directors and casting directors and people who are kind of players in the industry and what their perspective is on all of this, as well as interviewing more actors and hearing about their stories and what's led them to this to this point. My hopes and dreams include continuing to have Meg edit this so that we sound way more smart than we than we do in the raw yes, please, recording Meg. footage. <laughs> Those are my dreams. I'm just grateful. I'm really grateful. And I, I feel happy tying this up with a bow at this point. And we will be back. We will be back either in early September around that time. But if you follow us on Instagram or if you're on our mailing list, you will be notified. And that leads me to that. I have a feeling most folks here already follow us on Instagram, but please do if you don't already. We're at B-Way Vocal Coach on Instagram. We are at BVC Aspire for all of our college prep content and information for, for folks to whom that applies. And get on our mailing list. We would love to have you. We send out a weekly newsletter every Wednesday with updates and tips and exclusive access and offers that goes out to our email list first every time. So we'll have a link to that in our show notes to join our email list. That's definitely where you want to be if you want to stay in the loop with what we've got going on. And we've got some cool things going on, some courses and masterclasses and, and all sorts of stuff. Mm-hmm. 
Thank you, everyone. Thanks for listening. Cynthia, thank you eternally for joining me on this journey. And we'll take a little break. Thanks for dragging me along. <laughs> oh, yes. my pleasure. Anytime, <laughs> anytime. Okay, we'll catch you later. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Happy summer. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a screenshot, tag us on Instagram at Bway Vocal Coach, share this episode with a friend, and consider leaving us a review. And if you're ready to take your next step in this industry, but aren't entirely sure what that should be, then take our quiz. We'll strategize with you to outline a roadmap to your unique goals. Plus, from there, you can book a free consult with us. Visit bwayvocalcoach.com backslash take the quiz. We can't wait to hear your story and help you take the next step in your career. Thanks for listening. Thank you.